everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Welcome one and all to our humble silver pouring bench, also known as the Kitchen Hob, where today we are going to be showcasing some production of 100 gram silver bars which are made for the European Mint. We've got some brand new designs for 2020. We're also making the old style designs but with the 2020 year date stamp. So it should be a pretty exciting video with lots of different things. We're going to do silver pouring, silver stamping, silver antiquing and polishing and then showcasing all of these new pieces in all of their finished glory. There will be purchase links down in the description below to all of these items on our website if you are interested and you'd like to support the things we do here on the channel and get hold of these bars. Uh, the very best prices can be achieved by emailing me directly. My email is byb at backyardbullion.com. I just want to take this opportunity before we jump in with the molten silver to say a big thank you to the European Mint for uh, their very, very generous uh, you know, support of our channel and brand by commissioning these pieces and bars. Uh, they really are fantastic. And the designs, uh, you know, everything has been basically financed by the European Mint. So a huge thank you to them uh, for taking that risk and commitment to us and our brand. It's really very humbling indeed. Now today we are going to be, as I said, pouring 100 gram bars. We're going to aim to pour 100 grams. Uh, I wanted to do a bit of a live show here to show how that's done because it's not always as simple as you might think. We've got some reject bars here which are just too heavy. Now I do have a little bit of leeway. I often will leave bars in that are 105, 106, even 107 grams just because the amount Amount of time and energy and effort it takes to remelt all of them to make sure they're all 100 grams exactly just is impractical. So we've got some old bars which we're going to just stick into the furnace uh, to melt down but predominantly we're going to be using silver casting grain because I find it yields the best results to get some really nice ripples. This is the mould that we're going to be using for the bars. We will also be showcasing some of the rounds uh, as well so we're doing bars and rounds to start with. The other shapes that we did, like we did in 2019, will follow in 2020, but for the time being it's bars and rounds to start with. So pretty much ready to go. The silver is almost up to temperature, so let's just uh, tidy everything up here and I'll be back in a moment to pour some 100 gram bars. Okay, so we're basically ready to pour some silver, but before I do, I want to just very briefly explain the method by which we do these bars. A lot of people will ask and have asked in the past, well, why don't you just put 100 grams of the casting grain into your graphite crucible, stick that in the furnace and then pour it out and job done, you've got a 100 gram silver bar. Well, yes, you can do that, uh, but often you actually end up with a little bit of silver stuck in the bottom of the graphite crucibles. It doesn't quite all come out or when it does come out, it looks really ugly, horrible. It's got graphite dust on it and you don't get these really nice pretty ripples, which is what Pacquiao Bullion poured silver is all about. So the method by which we pour these bars and pretty much all of our products is basically hand-eye coordination and judging by hand and uh, you know from experience where the 100 gram mark will be in this. It does mean that you get over pours, you get under pours, you'll have to re-pour quite a lot of pieces and for every one that is good you often have two or three which were too far over or just under which is very frustrating. So uh, it is what it is. I enjoy doing it. It's a challenge. It's quite fun. We'll see how it goes today, whether or not these first two will actually yield any decent weighted pours. Uh, hopefully I've got a got a good idea of where to stop short at. So there's not much else really to say than let's pour some silver and see how we get on. Now, for those of you who haven't watched me pour silver before, the blowtorch that I've got on there is to help create the ripples in the silver. So it keeps the silver liquid just for a couple of fractions of a second longer than it would if you didn't. And that allows me to tap the mold and create some cool ripples. So here we go for the first attempt as a 100 gram bar. So I think that one is going to be slightly overweight. Now we do have enough silver to do a back-to-back -back pour. That one, however, I think is going to be pretty close to 100 grams. And there you can see we've got some really nice pretty ripples. So what we can do now is we can try and weigh them to see roughly how we are. Because one thing that's quite a big time saver is if you put already hot silver back into the furnace, it takes a lot less time for it to uh, actually 
melt, which is obviously quite an important thing. So what we're going to do is, if I can find a mould that's not roasty toasty hot, we'll put that on there, we'll zero it, we'll take this bar, the first one, which I think is going to be over, well, oh, you guys can't see that, it is 107 grams, if I just move that back just a touch, it's 107 ish, so let's quench it and just see on a more accurate scale where it comes out exactly. We might end up keeping that one as we've poured it live on camera here. And then this next one, which I think is going to be lighter. Oh, 106, and so not actually much lighter. Maybe it was just the way that the uh, sides have come out, because it's quite nice, and, quite nice and domed in a certain way. So uh, that's a kind of little top tip. If you can somehow safely weigh your silver when it's roasty toasty hot uh, if it is over and you need to put it back in the furnace or save yourself quite a lot of time uh, with it already being hot so let's have a quick look at these bars just do a quick kind of quality control check on them before we head over to the stamping block so they're looking pretty good I have to say now this you can see a couple of tiny little spots of graphite uh, dust that have come out there, that's fine, don't worry about those, those will come out nicely. It's really nice pretty ripples on all of these, lovely clean looking silver, so I think both of those are going to be keepers, assuming that those scales weren't horrendously wrong. Uh, in fact, let's uh, go grab some slightly more accurate scales and we can see exactly what it came out as. Right, let's see what these scales say now. You guys will see all these little burn marks on here. I do use this set of scales quite often. So this first one is coming out at 100 and it's 105.67. So yeah, I'm gonna keep that one and this one, unless it's over like 108 or something, we'll probably end up keeping it. And that one is 106, almost on the money. So yeah, I think we'll be keeping both of those. So whoever gets those two particular bars will have a couple of extra grams worth of free silver so there we go. So I'm going to now pour uh, some rounds and then we'll be back uh, after that to stamp some rounds and some, uh, some bars. So hang fire and we'll be back in a moment to pour some silver rounds. Right, time to do some 100 gram rounds this time. Basically the same principle, just in a different mould. This one you have to fill quite high to get 100 grams. Hopefully one or both of those will be up to the right weight level. Let's have a look. Let's get... Um, it's real faff to get the scales out here on camera, so I'm just going to quickly do it on my work surface over here, as you can see. And we'll quickly get these up there and see what weight they are looking at. I think they'll be alright, but we never know until we put them on the scales. 102, that one is reading. So that one's pretty cl damn close. Nicely done. Right pig to pick up these uh, these round ones. You have to get it exactly at the middle point of the round. There we go. And this one is all oh, 99. So I bet you that one's just going to be under. So let's quench both of them. And uh, we'll then have, well, we know this one's fine. So I'm just going to put that to one side. Um, but this other one, these scales are not 100% accurate. So they are obviously needing to be backed up by something a little bit more accurate, which we have here. So let's just zoom out a little bit. So this is the one that's potentially underneath 100 grams, and there you have it, 99.25 grams. So that one does not make the cut. Uh, so we'll have to remelt that one, uh, put it in the scrap box, and reuse it at some point. Uh, but this other one here is looking pretty good. Let's just give this one a quench right now. And then we can give it a quick weigh just to double check because I'm pretty sure it will be over uh, 100 grams. There you go, 102.33. So these uh, kitchen scales I've got are handy because they're pretty accurate, but not necessarily scientifically accurate. So there we go. That is the 100 gram round that we will be going over and stamping here today. Uh, we won't obviously be stamping this one. This one needs to go. It's actually kind of good that this one didn't, uh, didn't take because there's a little bit of... Um, 
kind of dotting there in the middle, which doesn't look 100% great. So this one, uh, much cleaner, much nicer round. So that is the one that we will be stamping. So next, I will see you over at the stamping bench, also known as our kitchen table. And we will be uh, stamping up these rounds and bars with the European Mint logo stamps. See you in a moment. Okay, here we are over at the stamping bench, also known as the kitchen table, where as you can see, we've got everything set up and ready to do some silver stamping. We've already done a few of these off camera. As you can see, we've got four of these wonderful horizontal style lion bars and then the dragon bar as well. But we're gonna put those to one side because in today's video, we're focusing on doing this round and this bar. And we're going to be using the new European mint uh, stamp, which we can see here, absolutely awesome, awesome stuff from M. Shaw Engraving. The design was from the European Mint, but the stamp was made by M. Shaw Engraving. If I have not put the link down in the description below, please somebody remind me because they are fantastic and I'd highly recommend them for anybody who wants to have silver stamps made in the UK. You can see they've uh, marked their name on there as well. Anyway, that's the stamp we're going to use today on these two particular bars. Now, for those of you who've been following my channel watching stamping videos for a while, you'll notice I've got a new anvil and that's really exciting uh, for me because the old anvil was potentially one of the causes for the contamination of silver which we had which I talked about a couple of weeks ago uh, so to get a new one like this is really really very good indeed it's case hardened steel so it's a lot more rust resistant so but also an anvil generally is one of your best friends if you're a silver stamper you can just get like little jewelry blocks and I had an old jewelry block for ages but the bigger and heavier your base unit is the anvil or whatever it is you're stamping uh, onto the better your stamps will turn out that is for sure another key piece of equipment is some ear defenders because this stuff is pretty loud especially with this new anvil as you can hear it's got some really nice resonance to it a pr pretty nice ding especially when we hit it hard with the silver so positioning your stamp is key where you position it is where the marks will go trying to get it centered is always a fun thing it's all done by eye that looks pretty good to me. Now with all of silver stamping, there's only really one way to do it and that's just with confidence and learning from mistakes. Hopefully this is gonna go all right. I've been stamping silver now for what, three and a half years, made plenty of mistakes, but essentially nice big heavy hammer as well really helps on these big wide stamps, confidence. So be prepared, there is gonna be a loud bang. Now, doing just one strike is really important because sometimes things will jump. You saw, you know, this table is not necessarily the best sort of footing for anything to be mounted on here. Uh, so things do jump. So for me, it's always one stamp at a time just to make sure everything is still in place and still biting. You can tell it's biting because when I move the stamp, the bar moves as well. Just gonna do one last hit and then we'll take it off and we'll have a look and see how it's gone. So that's gone pretty well. There's Nice detailing all around that, it's pretty straight. Uh, it could do with a touch more pressure, I think, going in on the left-hand side. And you can reposition it on again, you can see when it bites, feel when it bites. You can just tilt the stamp a little bit. And a few little dinky hits, the small dinky hits, you don't need to worry too much about things bouncing. The big hits you do. And hopefully, that has taken most of the detail. In fact, I think it has. So that is pretty perfect for what we were looking to achieve. If we can get that to focus, there it is. You might not be able to say, see all of the details, especially in this light, but once we antique things, which is gonna come at the end of this video, you'll see these designs just flare into life. Last little touches is to put on the backyard bullion leaf on each side of the lion here. Excellent, and then uh, we will be doing another stamp. I've done on these ones already 2020 on the edge and we'll also be doing the serial number as well on the opposite edge. But I don't have those 2020 stamps to hand at the moment so those will have to come later. But we're not finished with them anyway because the Edinburgh Assay Office will be putting a hallmark on underneath the European Mint 100 gram part of the bar. So we're going to set that one aside just for now and we're going to come to the round. Now this is the first time I'm using this stamp on this round. It is big enough, oh, the round is big enough to take the stamp. Uh, but interestingly, there's sort of, you know, there's contours and oval edges to this stamp. So, well, sorry, to the bar, to the round, I should say it's not a bar, I'm getting confused with my words. So in theory, it should all take, but we might have to do quite a lot of angling to make sure that it does take. Uh, so it could be quite interesting to see. And we're going to position this a little bit up at the top of the round as well. So the space underneath to put 2020 and then the hallmark underneath it. So hopefully 
that should be pretty perfect and then once again we're going to go one swift strike so prepare yourselves loud noise coming and that's still biting so I'm going to do one more and I can tell already from just looking at things that this side, the side closest to you guys here, is taking the stamp a lot deeper than the left. So I'm just going to angle things a little bit and get a bit more detail on there. One more hit and then we'll see how it's gone. So that looks pretty good. We're missing a tiny bit of the lion's claw at the top there. So let's get the stamp repositioned back on and then tilt up to the top left get that lion's paw going. Yeah, that looks good. And then I think we could do with another couple of big swift hits right down the middle just to get the full detail of the lion in. So here we go. Look at that. Hit it so hard that it's, it's in embedded into the stamp, which is a good sign. It comes out nice and easily though. And they're very good. Yes, I'm, in li I'm liking that. Excellent. There, that is that stamp coming out. We're really happy with the way that has turned out. Plenty of room underneath it for the 2020 mark as well as the hallmark. And we're going to put our little BYB leaf right at the top, I think, of this one. Lovely. Excellent. So that is how you stamp silver. Those are the two we've done today. I've got a few more that I need to stamp off camera and get finished, all the rounds as well. But yeah, that is essentially stamping silver for the European Mint. Next up is going to be the antiquing part. So we're going to actually do that well after all of these have come back from the Edinburgh City office, because there's no point antiquing it and then having to do it again when we've got the new marks put on. So for you guys, it'll be a couple of seconds. For me, it will be a couple of weeks, I think, until I get these back. So see you in a mo. Okay, so the next step is to antique the silver, also known as blackening it, and we are going to be using liver of sulphur to do that. It basically speeds up the aging process, the antiquing, the oxidization of the silver. And it's very smelly, let me tell you. If you uh, don't like the smell of rotten eggs, then antiquing silver is probably not for you. So we have the solution here. You just put a little bit of that gel into some water, hot water, and then you literally just place your silver in there. It won't need to be in for particularly long. We're not aiming for a really deep, dark patina here on these particular pieces. Um, but you want to be careful because if you leave things in for too long, they can often have a really, really dense patina, which is almost impossible sometimes to clean off, uh, certainly by hand anyway. So um, I wonder if you can see already actually that the, uh, the bar I put in first anyway, that one is starting to blacken up quite quickly. You can see it's a fairly rapid process. It doesn't take too long and uh, essentially all of the indented pieces or parts of the piece will be accentuated. They'll have their details blackened and then when we take these out and we end up polishing them, which is the very last step, they'll just leap out of the bar, leap out of the bar. It'll be absolutely lovely. So we're aiming for uh, a pretty light patina on this. We just want to uh, end up with basically the blackened in, you know, de uh, blackened letters and design. That's pretty good looking already. We're just gonna leave it in just for another couple of seconds uh, and then hopefully that one will be all fine. So, smelly, always, always, always use uh, a ventilated area. You've got the windows open here, even though it's a really cold, dank, horrible, wintry afternoon. But uh, nevertheless, it's uh, well worth opening those windows, let me tell you. So I think that one is gonna be pretty much ready to go now. Lovely rainbow colors on it, look at that. I mean, these are very pretty in their own right, don't get me wrong, but uh, people like their silver all shiny. So that's that one done. And um, we'll probably just leave the others for another couple of seconds and, uh, and then look to take them out. Maybe that one's looking like it's done now too. In fact, let's just take them all out. I think they are now done. So I'm just gonna go and rinse these off, uh, wash my hands as well, and then I'll be back for the last step, which is the polishing. Right, so we are back. They are all cleaned up now. Uh, what you basically do to stop the reaction is just a little bicarb of soda, uh, water and soap, just clean it, rinse it off thoroughly, and then the reaction will stop. So polishing wise, we're just using a silver polishing foam, Goddard's, I mean, there are plenty of other different types of silver polish out there, plenty to choose from. The best uh, method that I've found of polishing, certainly things with sort of higher details, is to get a piece of foam plenty of pieces of foam you can get out there. Uh, it can be any kind of piece of foam, to be honest, kitchen sponge, whatever. Uh, and then just put a little bit of that silver polish on there and you'll see, just even with the lightest of touches, it 
starts to polish up the bar really well. Uh, and then it's just a case of going over every, every part of the bar, square millimeter, making sure that it's all done. And you'll see that the, the uh, foam doesn't actually go down into all of the depths, nooks and crannies of the details uh, of, the, uh, of the design of the letters and everything. So it really does accentuate all of those extra little bits and details, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And that's one of the effects that we're looking to see from this and the before and afters. If I get you uh, one of the other bars in a moment to have a look at that I haven't antiqued, you'll really see the stark contrast and difference. The uh, the antiquing of it is, I think, really good. It's, it's an extra step, don't get me wrong. It takes quite a while for each piece. Uh, you can see just how long it takes for each individual one here. Uh, but you know, it's worth it because they end up looking, I think, really so much better than they did. So I'll probably just go over that one one more time just to make sure we've got off all of the different uh, imperfections and little bits and uh, that I might have missed but there's the sort of before and after so you can really see the stark contrast in that design and how that's showing up uh, of course polishing it as well makes it really nice and glorious and shiny and brilliant so that's the finished product that's what they're gonna look like so whilst we uh, finish up with the rest of these just uh, a quick reminder so that if you are interested in any of them they are available on our website there's a link down in the description below uh, you can also purchase these via the silver forum through the european mint group order which we are currently undertaking at the moment and if anybody out there is wondering uh, you know how to support our channel in terms of those group orders because it's an awful lot of work and we've been <laughs> not wanting to do them for quite a while uh, with Brexit and everything, but now that we are, I suppose, able to do it for at least the foreseeable future in this 2020 year, uh, you know, if you want to support us, then the best way to do that is to purchase these European Mint pieces as well. So links down below to both the Silver Forum, European Mint, and also our website, and you can find all of the information there. For the very, very best prices though, please email me directly, byb at backyardbullion.com. We can cut out those nasty PayPal fees and everything and uh, get you guys a little bit of a better price. We do ship worldwide, internationally, so uh, do let us know if you're interested even if you are abroad in the US, Canada, wherever you might be, we are able to ship anywhere in the world. So there we go. So I'm just going to quickly do the face of this bar and then I will go over all, I've got all the others to do. I've got quite a lot of work in front of me this afternoon, but um, you know, that's part of the job and uh, I'm not going to uh, shy away from it. I really do. It's quite nice because I, I tend to just stick on a big YouTube playlist of all of the different uh, kind of videos and channels that I follow out there and uh, then we just go and uh, enjoy that and I sit here on the table and uh, polish silver all afternoon but uh, there we go there's our there are the first four with all the four different designs that are currently available we've got rounds with the dragon rounds with the lion bars with the lion and bars with the dragon European mint style there we go Thank you one and all for watching. If you enjoyed this uh, rather lengthy, I know it's been a bit of a long one today, but if you enjoyed this making of process for these uh, bars, then please do let us know by hitting that thumbs up button and sharing this around on your social media. That would be very helpful for everything that we do here on the channel. Otherwise, if you just want to see videos from us in the future, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and the alarm bell if you want to get notifications. Thank you one and all for watching. Have a fantastic week ahead. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.